here. My name is Raviv. I'm part of the product management team here at Cisco Meraki. My partner in crime, Jeffrey, one of our lead system engineers, and we're very happy to be here today and share with you a few of our latest innovations, latest um, pieces of news that we released recently, primarily focused around security. Now, talking about security, just to, to set the stage here, I don't think that I'm going to say anything that is going to surprise any of you. Securing the network is hard. We're talking about multiple devices. We'll talk, we're talking about multiple technologies that are changing. We're talking about additional layers of complexity. It's not just about the devices. It's about the applications. Applications no longer live in a single place. They can be in a data center. They can be in a certain cloud. They can be SaaS delivered. They can be on-prem deployed, this is another layer of complexity. And if that wasn't enough, we also have humans and robots and IoT devices and sensors, which creates even more complexity that we've seen before. Now, I've been in the security space, uh, I think since about 2006. And if there's one thing that I learned is that you can't sprinkle some security magic dust and hope that everything would work. You can't really put on a firewall and expect all your security problems to be solved. In today's day and age, when it comes to security, you need to have a strategy, a strategy that goes beyond a single device. You need to have multiple solutions. You need to have cutting edge technologies. And we here at Cisco have been investing in that greatly. But it comes with a challenge. It comes with a challenge because then you find yourself at times navigating between different vendors and different dashboards, different sets of capabilities, putting in rules manually. It's complicated. It's complicated and if you don't have an easy to use, straightforward security solution, chances are that a human factor would kick in. And if we're looking at some of the major attacks that we've seen recently, that has been one of the key factors for systems and assets being compromised. Now, the question is, how can we address that? And we, we took that to heart at Meraki. We believe that the answer for that is the Meraki platform. Now, a platform is something that is not built on top of a single product, is not built on top of a single offering, or not even a single cloud. A platform is a combination of all of those things. And here at Meraki, Cisco Meraki, what we're offering is a secure, simple, intelligent platform. Now, that gives us power that gives us the ability to do a lot of things. Today we're talking about security, and let me just give you a few examples here. Security has to live throughout the platform. The cloud, the management, the delivery, the different products that consist of the platform. It has to be simple and easy to use, because if it's not, and if it's not straightforward, people are not going to get it right. We're all human. We know how it works. If something is working, we don't touch that. Cisco conducted a survey, I think it was about two or, or three years ago, and over 90% of the survey devices, Cisco devices, had known vulnerabilities that were only one patch away from being mitigated. But again, human nature. And we've been walking across Cisco to try and help our customers, our users, give them the, the power to fix that. And we really took that to heart on the Meraki side. With automated patch updates, firmware upgrades, we give you the tools, we give our customers, our users, the tools to do it seamlessly, remotely, and keep their networks safe. And finally, intelligence. 
Everyone is talking about intelligence these days. Over at Meraki, we manage close to two and a half million networks consisting of our own devices with our customers. Two and a half million networks that connect to the cloud, send over analytics, and let us know what's going on. And for our customers' networks, we can use that information to make smart decisions. We can use that information in order to alert our customers if something is going on, if something is going wrong. And we give our customers the ability to take action and do something about that. Now, if we take a closer look at the Meraki platform, we'll see that, you know, first and foremost, our roots are in networking. And part of networking is security. With the Cisco acquisition, and again, I've been in the security space for a while, being here at Cisco means for me that I can choose all the best of breed, cutting edge security technologies out there and make them easily consumable through the Meraki platform to our customers. This is amazing. Honestly, it feels to me like you know, being a kid in a candy store. The things we can do, the power on our fingertips that we can make accessible to our customers. But it doesn't end there. There are other components of the platform. First and foremost, our cloud, cloud management platform, the easy to use UI, the API management that we offer to our customers, to our ecosystem, so that applications can be built on top of that. And finally, the hardware devices, the endpoints that are the building blocks of our platform. Each and every one of them is participating in keeping our customers' networks secure. Each and every one of them is important for enforcing, monitoring, but first and foremost, just like any other Cisco device, they need to be trustworthy. And it all starts there. Security that is built from the ground up all the way to the cloud using modern security technologies, allowing us to make sure that we have anchored our root of trust, our security in hardware, so that whatever we're building on top of that is solid and provides our customers with the security that they need. Now, before we go into a set of um, examples, hopefully some good questions, so we can keep that interactive and some demos, I want to, to give you an example. I, I talked about the power of the platform and the way that we're using the platform to deliver security to our customers. Let me show you something else. Just like we're using the platform to deliver security, we're using the same platform to deliver assurance. And just like when it comes to security, when it comes to assurance, you can't sprinkle some magic dust and expect your user experience or application experience to be great. This is something that has to be done throughout the platform. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're leveraging the analytics that we have. We're harnessing machine learning and AI in order to make sure that our users in our networks are getting the optimal experience for their applications. From the endpoint, through systems manager and the switching fabric, access points, Wi-Fi 6, through SD-WAN, Meraki Insight, Analytics, all the way to MG and the application server. This is the power of the platform, and that's what we're able to provide to our customers. So in other words, for the customer, there is magic dust. It's just gold. Yeah. Meraki. Yeah. Well, 
our customers aren't investing in Meraki. And the, the interesting thing is that the more you invest in the platform, the easier it gets for you to get back your results. And here at Cisco Live, I, I was privileged to, to talk to, I would say, a couple dozen of customers, our customers, and some prospective customers. And it's really interesting to see the challenges that they face. And it's really the same message that we hear over and over again. There's a shortage in skilled IT people all around the world when it comes to security. Professionals, things are even worse than just general IT specialists. Margins are being shrunk. There's a lot of pressure coming from companies to leverage the people that they do have to push their business forward and not just maintain existing networks. The marketing departments are looking into networks in order to harvest analytics and get some business insights, trying to transform the networks from being um, a cost center to something that the organization can really benefit from. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. I think we, we mentioned the MV video surveillance cameras. That's an amazing example to that. 99% of the surveillance video that everyone is um, taking these days goes unwatched. So why not have something smart and intelligent that can use that as a sensor that can tell you, that can give you insights and analytics about what's happening in your business. Same goes for security, same goes for assurance, same goes for every benefit that you want to derive out of your network. For the next portion, I want to, to have Jeffrey to come over, and we, we talked about a few, um, a few things pertaining to the platform as a whole. Um, Jeffrey is going to walk us through some exciting examples. If you have any questions, just, you know, don't wait, just let's have uh, an I've got one more. I'm, I'm not Please. a network specialist, but yeah. uh, what's the sweet spot for companies to buy Meraki? So is that enterprise? Is that everybody? Is that SMB? What? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, Meraki today has close to I want to say half a million customers or, or something in, in that magnitude. Um, we've been getting a lot of positive feedback from all segments, all verticals. The customers that really resonate with our value offering are customers that would be more likely to go faster to the cloud, customers that would be more outcome-based in their approach to, to networking, customers that would have lean IT teams. Those are the customers that we see that would get the, the most value out of, uh, out of the Meraki offering. OK, thanks. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Ravi, for the introduction. So now we're going to get into the more geeky details. So this is the exciting part for me. So practical and geeky. So we've talked about the platform. One shining example of how the platform really uh, amplifies itself is the new launch of the MG, which is a cloud managed for 3G device that converts for wireless signals into Ethernet. And when we launch a product, we don't have to start at step one. So if it takes 10 steps to launch a new product, we start at step seven, which make, gives us a very unfair advantage because a lot of the basics, a lot of the things that are related to security, a lot of the back end infrastructure, we don't have to go build it from scratch we start almost at the end, which is really cool, which is why we're able to do a lot of quick launches. And this is the latest platform component that we're adding, and there's more to come, of course. So we're only getting started. Diving into more geeky details, there's this thing called Meraki Trusted Access, where we're combining two components of the platform. So Sysdesk Manager, which is our MDM uh, uh, software application, and access points, and making them work more together, more seamlessly to solve a very common problem. If I walk into a conference room, I can clearly see on the wall, hey, that's the Wi-Fi password to get on. Now I have that for life, and I could probably share it with whoever. That's a very common problem. But we don't want to limit our, 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 our workers not to be able to get online, right? We still want to give them access. Well, let's give them access without the need to do MDM, because we all hate putting MDMs and somebody snooping on our devices but still do it securely without having that password everywhere. And that's doing automatic certificate uh, uh, distribution. 
without installing MDM. That's the key. And I'll show you what it looks like in the de uh, towards the end in the little demo. Again, it's really, really simple. Putting the power of the platform together with two disparate products. The next one is kind of my favorite, which is Identity PSK. So as we go, so going to the gentleman's question in the back, hey, what kind of verticals is Meraki a good fit in? Well, pretty much anything. We're getting the OT people now really interested. And then you got the IT folks that have to provide printer access. And then now everybody's pretty much wanting Wi-Fi access because a lot of these devices come without a wired connection. I mean, your, your device right there, there's no way to plug in unless you have an adapter, right? So your first medium is wireless. So we end up with 12, 15, 20 SSIDs. I've seen crazy stuff. So let's, let's not compromise security and put them all in the same SSID. And that's part of the magic of identity PSK is allowing that differentiated access all in the same SSID. That way your printers, your laptop, and everything else that you want to connect, I mean, your thermostats, whatever, are still able to be onboarded without the need to create a separate SSID, which makes your, 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 your Wi-Fi space a, a, a little bit nerdy, raises your noise flow. I mean, you guys know all the details on what happens when you do so many SSIDs, so you're still getting the benefits of one SSID without compromising security. That's, the, that's, that's a pretty, pretty big deal right there. Another really geeky one is this one, and I think I'm always debating which one's my favorite, but I've talked to people in all parts of the world. It's amazing how telecom closets, the patch cables that plug the wall jack into the switches always grow legs. They always move. <laughs> Even up to today, I've talked to several people at Cisco Live, and cables always move. When they move, what happens? Your configurations are no longer valid because it was probably in a different VLAN, or maybe it has an 802.1x policy and the device can't do it. I mean, there's some myriad of problems that happen when you move that cable. But what happens if that configuration were to follow that device? No more interruption of service. It can move all day long, but you're still with the right configuration. But we're doing it in a very clever way. We are, again, tying two components to that platform, in this case switching and access points, and allowing that configuration to follow where that access point is doing it. And behind the scenes, part of that Meraki magic is we're doing a whole PKI infrastructure to identify, hey, this is an access point. I know what kind of device it is. I know what MAC address I should have. I have a certificate already built in. Let me use all that infrastructure to make that Pixie does kind of kind of happen in a very seamless manner. So that is pretty cool. That solves a big problem for users, no matter the way they are in the world, because that is that that takes a lot of troubleshooting to go figure out. Oh, somebody moved the cable. That still happens in 2020. So you are using open standards to do this, or is this kind of a proprietary mechanism that you are leveraging? It's a regular PKA infrastructure. We're just leveraging the, the, the part that's probably proprietary is the M tunnel that we're leveraging behind the scenes to connect the dashboard to figure out, okay, this is an access point. We are sure this is an access point, and we're allowing that connection to the dashboard to verify that and let the switch also know that we, we've corroborated, we're using certificates, uh, but that's all happening behind the scenes. So it's a mix of both. So a little bit of 802.1x also, or? Uh, yes, which are essentially. Okay. And the configuration will just follow as needed for okay. the type of device it is. Uh, just think back if uh, 15, 20 years ago, maybe, we had a thing called Auto Smart Ports at Cisco, but few people implemented because it was hard to get all those components. So we're bringing it back, but with the Meraki magic, kind okay. of, if you, if you want to think about it that way. But thank you for the question. Now this one. It's been long overdue. People have always wanted firewall objects. Even though the dashboard, the way it's being built, kind of allows and it works almost like firewall objects, but people really wanted to see it look like an object in the UI because the backend still works the same. So that is finally on the platform. And we'll take a li little quick look. And again, it's just to make our users, the people that have to manage the firewalls, uh, easier on the eyes, if you will. And again, just uh, I don't know, the, the part of the Meraki magic and the part of the platform that's really interesting is that we're doing it at scale, which means I don't have to do point-based firewall rules. I can reuse a lot of these objects across one or 10,000 sites. So it allows you to scale. So that's part of the, the power of the platform right there. One interesting point I want to mention when it comes to, to scale, we've been getting amazing feedback from the community following our investment in APIs. At this point, I think that we're seeing 50 or 60 million API calls per day 
the ecosystem is amazing and we're going towards an API first approach. So everything that you're seeing either has an API or will shortly have an API. This feature was launched with an API. MG, the gateway, was launched a whole new product line with full API support out of the box from day one. Now, when did this launch? The, the enhanced firewall rules with the object groups. We're, we're announcing that um, today. Um, this is available in beta, and we will slowly roll it out to all users. So, yeah. And this is not firmware dependent, so it's just UI work. So that's, that makes it easy for you to right. have an appetite for it and start playing around with it. You make it sound cheap. It's like, so, <laughs> so there's a lot it, of backend and cloud <laughs> it's work. It's part of the magic. There. It's yeah. part of the magic. Yeah. So because it's firmware independent, we basically, if we want it now, we basically call Meraki support and say we'd like beta access to the object group, and we don't have to upgrade our MXs? Pretty much? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Or call your Meraki SC. He'll help you. Awesome. And there's a lot more cool things. Uh, for example, you guys have known about the umbrella integration. Again, more Cisco on Cisco. But we made it even simpler. So we made both of them talk, and it's been out for a while with APIs. Well, now we have a single SKU, single backend, all being reported on, a, on the Meraki platform. So you don't have to go to the umbrella uh, portal. Again, you have the power to choose if you want to go down this way or you still want more granular options from the umbrella integration. So again, depends on what kind of customer you are and how much you want to dive into this. Now that integrates cloud to cloud, so Correct. changes on either side are seamless both ways. Correct. Awesome. Thank you. So we have the option of either diving into the demo now or we t tell you a little bit about the greatest thing that's about to happen. What do you guys want? I'm I like it. big things. Big things are good. Okay, big things. All right. That way we live little time for demo towards the end. The big thing. Are you guys ready? Actually, you guys have already been to Cisco Live. You probably already saw it across the street. It is the MS390, launched in December. This is the latest switch that we're adding to our switch family. Now, it is what you guys have been asking for, which is Cisco hardware because we've been doing it so great for the last 20, 30 years. We've changed the industry. But we're adding a little bit of the pixie dust or marking magic, like you like to call it. And we are going to be adding uh, SGTs, and we're going to make it easy to do. So you guys already know the story in the timeline. The whole idea of SGTs is not worry about subnets, IP addresses, but we want IT to talk to IoT servers, printers to talk to users. I mean, the concepts are exactly the same. We're just going to simplify how to do it, make the applications and the proper users talk to each other only if they need to. So if I have an IoT device, there's no reason it needs to talk to the printer, unless it really did, does. So that's the idea, providing that micro level segmentation at the switch level. So you are doing tech-based policy enforcement. Is this stateful inspection or? This is tech-based on the switch in line enforcement. And um, just are you leveraging really the SGT tech, or is it something different that is working on the back? No, it is the actual SGT tag. So if you do a packet capture, you will see that tag and those bits on the headers of those packets. Okay, good. So. Okay. Given that there's a whole lot of IPv6 in IoT, and Meraki's policy to date has been to just bridge it and don't touch it, how are you accomplishing that segregation? I love that question. I was going to ask about when is IPv6 going to be available, but you hit it first. No, I, I'm not worried about the when <laughs> is it going to be available. I'm just wondering now? how those two policies uh, merge. Actually, hold that thought. Okay. Uh, I'll just answer your question indirectly in the demo. So let's just okay. jump to it as, as we get towards the end here. Since you asked that question, notice my laptop. I have an IPv6 sticker. Well, isn't that nice? <laughs> I'm one of the <laughs> IPv6 evangelists, or well, self-proclaimed evangelists in the world. I've been doing it since 2005. Kurt is finally dancing. Yeah. <laughs> so, just to answer your question, because I got excited, this is actually my <laughs> lab with a whole bunch of IPv6 on it. Well, isn't that nice? So there's a lot of work that is happening and has happened, you're just not noticing that the right parts are already there. But a lot more work, and we can have a whole separate conversation on this, so I don't want to distract us since this is on the security there you side. you go, Jordy. It's, it's your fault. Picture of that dashboard. No. Yeah, it's on, <laughs> it's this on is camera, This is the dashboard man. you want to take a picture of. It's already on camera. <laughs> are you refreshing, US? 
Uh, excuse me? Are you reforesting US with all the... Oh, this is, uh, <laughs> this is called the Meraki takeover. This is how much people believe in the platform all over the world. Oh. This is not number of devices. This is networks. A network can have one or can have 10,000 devices. So it's up to you. So now let's look at the, all the individual components that we talked about. What do they look like? I'm going to show you the MG. The MG looks very similar to any other Cisco Meraki product, right? Little little training needed, you just go look, okay, what IP address did it get? Because it is a cellular device, I have an IMEI, I have it connected to a 3G signal because I can't get any better there. Okay, let's go see my AT&T connection because these are in the US. Again, I'm gonna go take a look. Okay, this one gets a, an okay signal, 4G. I can still look at what kind of band I'm connecting to. Again, the all usual great information from historical, to real-time information coming in. Again, the good, the useness of the platform that you're already used to on the rest of the platforms are also available on, on the MG. Now, switching over to the, uh, the Meraki Trust component where we tied in MDM with, access, the, with the access points. So we just go into an SSID, Trust V6. Again, to, I'm on the, I have all kind of V6 SSIDs. Can I do a quick question? Yes, sir. This is the Meraki interface, right? Correct. Is that hooked into Intersites as well, or is that not an option right now? The, the, that is completely separate product line, uh, not integrated. We they're completely disparate right now. But any thoughts on going there as well, or not at all? If you wish for it, maybe we have to evaluate. Maybe customers would like to have uh, one dashboard that... No, of course. Of and uh, I guess we, we would need to talk to you, the customers, to see what kind of use cases are we solving for, not just because we can do it, we want to do it, we want to be smart about our resources and what we sure. build. I, I think that, um, just to, to add to that, Meraki's secret sauce, um, and I'm going on the record with that, <laughs> has always been listen to customers and then solve customer problems. No. So that, that you know, feedback is, is good, and if you're a Meraki customer out there, reach out. If, if you have a need, reach out. We, we want to hear about it. We want to, to better understand that. I also want to add that one of the key catalysts for us to invest in APIs is the rise of many, many dashboards and systems and everything that comes with that within Cisco, outside of Cisco, across the industry. And in order to address the multiple needs that we see coming from multiple customers, the first line of service that we offer to our customers is full and open API support. So we, we do use the open API framework. We do have a large ecosystem. You can, you can check out developers.meraki.io, apps.meraki.io. We have a lot of customers, especially on the enterprise uh, segment that have their own DevOps, AI ops. Going into the SSIDs, we can see customers like to put a lot of SSIDs. This is hopefully not one of you guys. But if we wanted to do IPSK, it's just another drop down option that you can do. You can do it with Radius, where you can use something like ICE to, to make the policies happen, and the access point just sends all the proper information, and then ICE tells us, yep, it's allowed. Let's, let's go for it. And it's a simple drop down there. Once we select that, we have our ICE servers in the back end. Nothing or shattering there. Very, very simple part of the Meraki magic. And then last but not least, uh, let's go take a look at that firewall. You know how I told you guys you can reuse objects? Well, notice where a lot of these objects exist on the organizational level, which means I can reuse them for every single network. Nice. So it, it allows it to really, really scale. So simplify any is the same one. Yeah, so you create your objects, and I don't have that many, so I created a few individual objects, and then I created groups from there. For example, DNS, different servers, uh, cloud-based VoIP uh, service called Ring Central, and then if I actually go into a network, I can reuse those groups into my firewall policies. Really, really nifty way to scale and build your policies. Again, I'm going to call this one DNS, just for simplicity. I don't care where it's coming from. I don't care what port. But let's just go to all my DNS servers and send it to syslog, and that's it. And last but not least, our 
prized possession, the MS390, look and feel is exactly the same. Can you just click one time on an object? I just want to see how it looks like if you create one, what are the things. Is this umbrella thing, for example, a predefined that you already prepare in the system, or this was? So it depends on the integration. The original integration allows you to configure both sides of the house. The one that we're letting you know about today is predefined policies that the umbrella team has said. These are the most common things that people configure, and you're stuck with them. You can't change them. Okay. So again, we, we simplified that experience for people that just don't want to deal with it. So you have both flavors you can choose from. Okay. Yep. Just going back a step, you said the, the MS390 was uh, incorporating Cisco hardware into the switch. Is that a UADP based switch? Yes. Very nice. Thank you. Yep. Like I said, it's what you guys have been asking for. Cisco hardware with Meraki management on top of it. it gives you the best of both worlds. So with that, questions, we'll stick around. Thank you very much. And hopefully you, you get excited about IPv6. Uh, I do encourage you to go to our community. We are providing a lot of updates. Our next update is going to be in February. But in December, we pretty much let people know, hey, we are working heavily on IPv6. It's one of our priorities. Pretty much all the back end is already IPv6. Uh, addressed, we just haven't turned on the Quadia records on. Now, but is there, is there a time frame for turning that on? We actually did last week uh, for one hour just to see what happens. It's almost like uh, uh, IPv6 day back in 2011. And we may do another test today for one more hour, so be on the lookout.